Hello everyone, uh, Dan Calloway here. Um, and today I'd like to talk about a utility that uh, I installed in my favorite Linux operating system that is my daily driver now, which is Silent OS, which is a XFCE edition uh, based on XFCE 4. Great operating system, still love it. Uh, the utility that I'm going to show you um, that I use uh, almost almost every day is one that didn't come out of the box though. This one's one I installed uh, using Pac-Man. And this one is called uh, GFTP. Now Silent OS comes with FileZilla. FileZilla is very similar to GFTP. I just prefer GFTP. It's the GNOME file transfer protocol um, because I like it um, in the fact that it, it looks like Windows Explorer um, with the left and right pane. And I'll show you that when I get into it. But let me go ahead and open it up and so I'm gonna hit the whisker menu go down to internet and go across to GFTP and there it is this is what it looks like this is the local system over here which I'm logged into basically on the local system here's the remote system which is my six terabyte personal cloud um, up on the network it uh, is not connected to it right now. Uh, in other words, my laptop is not connected to it. It is located on the network at 192.168.1.157. So I'm going to load that there in the host location. Um, the username associated with the account here is my, Dan Calloway, uh, not Data Pioneer. I'm going to use FTP protocol. Um, for connecting the first time I can use HTTP or local or SSH2 and I'll demo SSH2 here in a little while or um, FSP as well. SSH2 allows you to transfer files to and from the personal cloud on my network uh, in an encrypted form uh, be the same as if I SSH'd into my personal cloud uh, from the Linux terminal which I will do as well but Let's go with FTP for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and click this button here. And when I do that, it prompts me for my password. That means it's actually seeing the connection request and it's waiting for a response. So let me go ahead and put that in. And there it goes. It has now connected me to my personal cloud on the network. This is a six terabyte personal cloud. I like it because I don't need a Dropbox account um, or any other external uh, file sharing or file storage system um, because you know I have my own. It's under my control, my administration. I access it when I want to. Don't have to worry about paying any fees for it. I've had it now for almost four years. It's been a great uh, personal cloud, uh, and uh, it initially came with five terabytes of storage but I've uh, augmented it. I uh, have a one terabyte uh, device that I connected to it via USB and then um, it now sees it as one whole six terabyte system instead of five. Here's the structure of it. Um, it is at 192.168.1.157 as I said. Um, a lot of things I keep on the public side, which I share with folks, but I do have a lot of uh, personal stuff uh, stored away, you know, tax information and, and that kind of stuff, previous uh, filings and, and that kind of stuff that I don't want, you know, the world to see. So if I uh, take a look at the public side, I'm going to go ahead and double click on it, and that opens up the public side. And I have several folders here. One's called Shared Documents. One's called Shared Music, one called, one called Shared Pictures, Shared Software, Shared Videos. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, double-click on Shared Pictures and open that up. And I've got a ton of stuff in here, too. Um, I've got a folder here called Bridges, which is a bunch of uh, files that uh, were actually given to me. They're free. Uh, the Abstract, the Bridges, the Fog, and the Max Standard were all, and the Miscellaneous, were all folders of uh, tons of pictures given to me by a friend um, freely and because you can share them freely they're not copyrighted 
Let me go down to my, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this particular bridges folder over to my local system. So I'm going to down arrow here, or down, scroll down, and go to the pictures directory on my Linux system. I'll double click on it to get into it. Okay. And there it is. And so I'm going to go ahead and the way I transfer this entire folder down to the, the uh, local system here is very simple and I like it because I can do it a folder or files or both at a time I don't have to you know I'm not limited or restricted to just a single file at a time this bridges folder probably has 35 40 pictures in it so I'm going to highlight it and then this right arrow here allows me to download when I click it it allows this folder to be downloaded to my local system very quick by the way uh, very quick transfer the personal cloud that I'm running, um, which is a WD personal cloud, Western Digital, um, is running Debian uh, Linux. Okay, so that's the structure. It's a Debian system. That's why you can use SSH. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click the down arrow button here. And you can see that it's copying the files over. It's already at 20%. Uh, so it's very rapid. And I got about uh, nine seconds left. And then when it's finished, I'll get out of it and show you that the uh, files did get copied over. All right, so they're copied over. I'm going to go ahead and close the system out. That shuts down the connection. I'm going to get into Thunar File Manager. And I'm going to get into my Pictures folder or directory. And there you go. There's the Bridges folder that was up on the Personal Cloud. I'm going to select it, and here are all the pictures that were on the personal cloud uh, in the Bridges folder. Okay, uh, one in particular I'll go ahead and bring up is I'll say this this one right here. I'm going to go right click and open with Darktable. Darktable is a uh, an application or a program on the Linux system, the Silent OS. A very nice one for rendering pictures. Okay. So it's going to take a few seconds. It'll open up here for me. And I'll show you the picture. Here it comes. Okay, so there's the picture. All right, so this is Darktable. And um, and so I was able to copy down, um, you know, files or pictures in this case to my local system from the personal cloud uh, very easily. All right, and I can do the opposite. I can reverse the process, take things that are on my local system, send them up to the personal cloud using the left arrow button that was up here. We get back into it, I'll show you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the Thunar file manager. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, GFTP client one more time. So let me go down to Internet. And like I said, I installed this one, but uh, this one's the one that came out of the box. So GFTP, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Now you notice we are disconnected. This time, rather than FTP, I'm going to select SSH version 2. I'm going to have to change the username since I don't have an account up there on my personal cloud under that name that allows me to uh, send encrypted files through SSH. Um, I am going to go ahead and enter that username. The host address is the same, and I just remembered something need to check to make sure that SSH is turned on in the system. Way to do that, uh, this is my Silent OS Arch system. Get into the terminal and let's do um, system control command system ctl uh, status sshd. So I'm asking the system control in Arch Linux to give me the status of the SSH daemon. All right. And it says it's loaded. Okay. I've got it installed, but it's disabled by the uh, developer. Okay. Vendors disabled. It's inactive and dead. So that means it's not running. So that would not have worked on my personal cloud if I attempted to log into my account up there because SSH daemon down here on the local system is turned off. So let me go ahead and turn it on. So let me do a system CTL start. Let me go ahead and start the SSH daemon. All right. And it's prompting me for my password. 
does require elevated privileges to do that. I'm back to my prompt here, which means it should be turned on. So let me go ahead and check the status again. All right, so now it is uh, active and running. It's still disabled, though, which means if I close my session in the terminal and try to get back into it, it's going to be um, shut down again. If I uh, reboot the system, definitely it's going to be shut down. It will not auto restart. Okay, so I want it to auto restart from now on, and I can turn that off later if I, if I want to turn that off. Some folks would, would say or would argue that you don't want to leave SSH running all the time because uh, it's a security breach, and you know what? They're right, but for, uh, for the cases that of today in this video I'm just going to go ahead and let it run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and up arrow and uh, instead of start I want to enable SSHD. Okay, Prompting me again because I need uh, sudo privileges to do this. Alright so it created a symlink of Etsy system D system multi-user.target.wants uh, forward slash sshd service to this link here all right which is the user lib system d system sshd service which is what is needed in order to make it persistent or to make it auto start on reboot all right so let me go ahead and check the status one more time all right and you can see from the status let me go ahead and clear the screen and let's do a status again. And you can see from the status here of the open SSH daemon that it is enabled now. Okay. It's still vendor disabled on a preset, but it is enabled by uh, the system. Um, it is active and running. Uh, got 880.0 kilobytes of memory allocated to the system for the service. Um, Here's some log readout here, or printout. It started the OpenSSH daemon. The server is listening on port 22, and the server is listening on port 22 uh, as of 1738.31. So it's listening now. It's waiting for an SSH connection. All right, so just to demo something here, show you that SSH is working, I'm going to go ahead and issue the uh, command here in Linux uh, to connect to my personal cloud. Uh, using the root um, profile or user uh, account in order to access it uh, via the terminal and then I'll get into F uh, GFTP later. Alright, so let's do this. SSH root at 192.168.1.157 hit enter and it's asking me for root's password which means I'm communicating with the uh, uh, with the personal cloud, which means that you know it, it's talking to it. It's not logged in yet, but it's talking to it. Let me go ahead and log in, and I'm in. So I'm connected to my personal cloud now through an encrypted connection, through an SSH tunnel, and I'm going to CD to the shares directory because that's where all the shares are. I'm going to run a long listing okay, of that, and you can see that uh, here's the Dan storage, Don. Here's the public stuff. Okay. Uh, if I were to CD to the public folder and then run a long listing of that, you can see that there's my shared documents, uh, my shared music, shared pictures, shared software, shared videos. Okay. Let's go ahead and exit out of here and break the connection. All right. So the connection is closed. Let me exit out of the terminal. Now let me get back to the. Uh, uh, GNOME FTP client that I had up earlier. So now this should work. Uh, if I want to SSH version 2 connect into my personal cloud using this utility, using root as the username to make the login possible should work for me. So let me go ahead and click this button and let me bring the password screen down. Let me go ahead and enter the password which is different from the other one. And I should connect. All right, so I'm connected. Notice I'm not looking at the, what you saw earlier when I SSH'd into uh, my personal cloud via my terminal. The reason for that is is that I am not in the shares directory. So I'm going to go up here. And by the way, here's that 
right arrow for taking things from here to here and I'll do that actually show you the, how that works double click and come on down I'm in the structure now in Debian on my personal cloud there's the shares directory so I'm gonna double click on the shares directory and there you go here's the public folder or directory on the personal cloud and here's the public stuff that I can share with others alright I want to come back to the local system here and I want to go to my documents folder or directory and I want to take uh, this file which is what is Linux um, dot back which is a backup of the what is Linux uh, dot doc file and I want to send it up to the shared documents directory alright so I highlight it over here then I come back over here and I highlight this one open it up okay and then instead of downloading from here from the personal cloud back to my local system now I'm going to perform an upload to the personal cloud by using this button right here now the difference in what we're doing here from what I did the first time around is this when this transfer that I'm doing from my local system to the personal cloud on the network at that address is going to be encrypted uh, it's going through an encrypted tunnel so if I've got eavesdroppers who are using uh, Wireshark or something like, like that to sniff my packets if they can uh, then when I transfer this up to the personal cloud they will not be able to intercept it in the traffic that they see uh, they will not be able to read the file obtain the file in any way and uh, this file will remain encrypted and protected by this SSH tunnel that's created here in the GNOME file transfer protocol um, client using SSH version 2 alright so let me go ahead and upload it alright and so it's now uploaded and so if I come down we're looking at folders right now so if I come down I'm looking for what is um, Linux swap here we go Let's see what is Linux swap dot back and there's the file I just uploaded from here okay so it made it up there and it's an unencrypted now because it's uh, sitting on the personal cloud in an unencrypted form but as it was transiting across to the personal cloud it was transiting in an SSH encrypted tunnel alright so this is how you upload uh, using FTP or download using FTP or upload using SSH version 2 and I can do the same if I performed a download from the personal cloud um, to my local system so I'll, I'll demonstrate that real quick um, I've got a file called syncthingvideo.mp4 and I don't want anybody to be able to possibly grab it alright so when I download it from the personal cloud to my local system and so let me go ahead and um, come up to uh, let's see here alright and let's come down to videos so let me go to the video directory my local system let me open it up alright and so that's the file that I want to download so I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button and so it's coming down in encrypted form and this is the 32 gigabyte file so it's it's coming down pretty rapidly actually only got about uh, a few seconds left there we go so there it is alright and so let me get out of the FTP client in this case the SSH client which is uh, GNOME FTP and we get back into Thunar and let's go down to the video um, folder directory and syncthingvideo.mp4 there it is so it made it down without a problem um, and it was in going through the uh, SSH tunnel so nobody could grab it if they potentially wanted to grab it so this has been uh, accessing my personal cloud via the GNOME FTP client hope you enjoy the video if, if you have questions just uh, leave comments please make sure you uh, log in subscribe and log in and comment and uh, like my videos as well thank you very much have a nice day